Hello. Hello, and welcome to Twist Script Tales. We've got a tale for you of ancient technology. JD Ancient Technology. And first, welcome, Stu Ritchie. How are you, mate? Mr. JD Juggs. JD Juggs. What a story we've got today, because not only are these guys cast up brand new. Brand new. But then they have to get machined. And that's what yes. we're happening in this wonderful establishment here. Yes, secret location, In a Bruce. secret location Top here. Top secret. In the deep south. No, not Louisiana. Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. You don't, not can't Melbourne, get, Florida. You can't get much, no, not Melbourne, Florida. You can't get much deeper south than Melbourne, Australia. And we're talking the new technology of the ancient technology. Yes. So what are the marvellous advantages and, uh, and improvements that are going into these uh, brand new, besides this wonderful steel, iron, 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 in this wonderful technology, Stu? Yeah, so as we previously talked about, Bruce, with the, with the iron at Beckwith, uh, Beckwith Iron and Steel and the casting, here we have a casting of our straight fin racing Ricardo cylinder. Now this cylinder came out on the board track races in the 20s and was very limited uh, cylinder. The tapered finned uh, Ricardo came out later on. That was on the hill climbers and road races in Europe. But the uh, straight fin uh, came out in the, the board track races. So basically the difference between a straight fin is the straight fins, okay? I'm following and that. And on a tapered fin, we have Let ta me guess. tapered in fins, Bruce. Tapered in fins. Tapered in fins, okay. Now, so are we talking about the teens here? 19, 20s, 20, 20s, 20s racing. So 1920s where was that? And yeah. uh, late 20s. Late 20s, early 30s. So uh, hill climbing and European Road racers had the uh, tapered fin. Uh, now, why did they Ricardo's. taper the fins? Did they run alcohol, or is yes. it just to save weight, or both? Don't know. It wasn't there, Bruce? This is my disclaimer again. Wasn't there? Don't know. I, I was only... there, and I can't remember. It's you too can't, long ago. You can't remember. Yeah. So, basically, the hill climbers did did run on alcohol and they were the majority of them 80, 80 cubes. The road racers, however, were 61 cubes because they ran in the 61 road racing class. 1,000 cc's. Correct. They did run on alcohol, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly sure. Now another thing other than the uh, straight, straight fin Ricardos and the tapered fin is the straight fins are machined on the throat of the barrel and the outside of the flange is to be machined on the outside of the flange. The tapered fin Ricardos actually had front and rear put on the uh, cylinders also with a, a casting mark there, 1-24RH-D, uh, no, 1-24BH-D. So we're assuming 1924 they came out. Now the tapered fins also had no machining there on the throat, had a slightly thicker throat and no machining on the outside of the flange. So here we have a straight fin Ricardo. Straight fin Ricardos, this, this cylinder's just come out of the uh, first operation. It, um, it needs to be machined on the throat and the outside of the flange. So that they had a plain machined surface on the outside of the flange and on the throat of the cylinder. Um, reinforcement on the exhaust uh, port the larger intake port and larger exhaust nipple makes for better horsepower. Now these had the fins all the same, so this is called a straight fin Ricardo. And this one, thanks Bruce, is called a tapered fin Ricardo because the bottom fins taper in towards the barrel. Now my friend in Sydney, young Luke Atkins, calls these the pineapples, mate. He reckons they're the bomb, you've got to get the pineapple barrels. Now, they have this casting mark that we were talking about before, 1-24B, H-D, and then on the front cylinder, they have front, but they had it upside down. On the rear cylinder, they've got rear, and that was the right way up. So we replicated the mistake 100 years later. 100 years, not 100 years later. 100 years? Nine, nine, 
90, 96 years later. Now, Stu, I'm guessing the reason why they had to cast front and rear on these cylinders is because a few people had ended up putting them on the wrong way round and the exhaust pipe came out past the front, which restricted the, the turning of the front wheel. Probably. Which would have been a racing problem. Pro probably, Bruce. So they've solved that problem by printing front and rear. Yes. Now, on the front cylinder, they've actually got the word front upside down. So that would be for the northern hemisphere, or maybe because they're then reading no, it that's up for so us down right under. Down under. Down that, under, front. These were made for Australia. Very helpful. So, Australian barrels, racing barrels. Yep. Mistake that they made back in the day. Obviously, we replicate that mistake. Unless it's a technical thing that's no good, we won't replicate that. But, um, but uh, the fancy smancy looks thing, we replicate. Now the Ricardo cylinder has a 74, so it has a larger intake port, it has a larger exhaust port. Um, uh, traditionally it ran the larger later 24 and up, larger diameter exhaust valve. So this particular set of uh, Ricardo tapered fins were um, our first test set and they've done over a thousand hard miles, Bruce. Hard, hard. And as you can see, the bore is still beautiful um, and uh, testament to the quality of the material from Beckwith Iron and Steel, testament to the machining. And of course, it has your favourite squish Ricardo head there, which is flat, where the piston comes up there and squishes on the, on the actual bottom of the combustion chamber. So here we have the combustion chamber of the Ricardo, thicker uh, wall thickness around the top of the cylinder and the flat surface area here and a larger area uh, going from the pre-combustion chamber I don't know you, you would call that Bruce pre-combustion chamber where the valves are and the spark plug central spark and the, plug and, and the spark plug in the middle and then over here we've got the actual uh, on top of the piston combustion area now as you'll see here in an original, uh, original cylinder, we have some very thin spots. We have some thin spots underneath where the uh, exhaust valve is machined. So continually machining your exhaust valve or putting seats in an f head cylinder is pretty much a no go. That's going to fall you'll break off. Out. Yeah, because it'll crack, crack and, through there. and break out. Now, after it went through the exhaust valve, it sort of billowed out underneath there. So on our Ricardo cylinder we've actually closed up the exhaust port and we run the smaller diameter pre-24 exhaust valve so big big intake good compression and then excellent scavenging um, from the smaller diameter valve and exhaust port so, and lots of material underneath that exhaust valve yeah uh, yeah a lot yeah, yeah a lot now um, also what we've done is we've made up a, um, a new cage for the ricardos which is like a high flow and it's actually um, computer designed and uh, fifth access slide rule um, design yeah normally i do things on, on on a piece of paper or a napkin but uh, you'll see that uh, this time i don't now compared to a a normal cylinder the ricardo has a larger pre-combustion area and a larger area to go over on top of the uh, cylinder for that squish combustion chamber. So a larger flow area there, and that gives us a lot more high RPM power for us. On the early cylinder, um, 61 cylinder, we, we can see that we've got a bit of a problem there with thickness there underneath the um, spark plug, and we've got a bit of a problem regarding thickness underneath the uh, valve seat for the exhaust. So machining machining this away to put a valve seat in there, very dangerous, very risky. Um, obviously chopping away at your valve seat um, is going to weaken that area and these cylinders have been known to crack and the exhaust port um, can crack off. This is a Ricardo cylinder and this is the inlet cage that we machined one. up. Yeah, this is a new one. Okay. So you can see that when we place in the
inlet cage that it's actually machined underneath there, underneath that surface. So when the cage sits in there, it's all machined in there and <coughs> nice fitting and beautiful. So you can see the difference here between a you can see the difference here between a 61 standard inlet cage and a Ricardo high flow inlet cage. Um, basically they're the same diameter with the Ricardo one being the 74 height. Uh, keeping a bit of air speed there and um, as I said before I've fitted a, a slightly smaller um, diameter head with a uh, on the valve with a three angle valve job there. Uh, our intake valve guides and our exhaust valve guides are made from a material called Material on Tough Met and it's used on the Mars Rover as all its bearing surfaces and things like that used in heavy machinery, uh, low lubrication uh, application so it's a nickel aluminium uh, bronze and used with a nitrided valve um, had a heap of success with uh, longevity in the cylinders, both intake and exhaust. So with the smaller pre-combustion area, you get a higher compression ratio? Correct, but they had a big mushroom top in the cylinder. These have a flat top, so we uh, robbed from Peter to pay Paul in the combustion stakes, Bruce. Yes, lots of squish. Lots of squish. And sufficient compression. Correct. So. When these are stroked out to about 80, I think they reach about 9 to 1 compression. Wow. And back in the day, they were running on ben benzene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben yeah. Benzene, yeah. benzene yeah. alcohol. Running cool. Running and cool, fast. man. Cool and fast. Cool and fast. This is the way we like it. That's it. So when we machine up the cylinder, they come as a casting. Um, it gets put in a specialised jig which um, has counterweights on it for that particular type of cylinder. So the Ricardo has a different counterweight to the 74 cylinders to the 61s. And in the first machine, which is a Mazak lathe, we machine the bore, spigot, flange. Okay, so the bore, spigot and flange are all 100% uh, within a punctinth of a punctinth um, in alignment with each other. Well, doing all that together, you get make sure that the flange is square to the bore, and that was never a guarantee in the old days, was it? So that's that's keeping this spot on. That's what I just said, Bruce. Yes, lovely. Nice. Okay, so as per the original cylinders have a gramophone finish. I don't know, it's called something, but um, I like gramophone because it looks like a record. Is there a tune um, on that? I don't know, we'll have to play it. With the needle, maybe if we go backwards, it does. Plays, Paul, Paul is a dead man. Plays Led that? Zeppelin. Yeah, could be, yes. Yes, okay. So, with the Ricardos, they had uh, a lot of improvements over the, over the normal cylinders. Larger intake port, um, larger exhaust port. Obviously, you can see the uh, reinforcement around the uh, exhaust port there, where they used to crack on the on the original ones. Um, they used to crack there sometimes. It also has, instead of one, two, three, four, five, it has an extra fin. So it has six six fins on, on the uh, exhaust port for the people that count fins. They're the five fin for the 61s and seven fin for the 74s, Bruce. The inlet cage is actually 61 cubic inch diameter with a 74 height. So it actually gets a bit better flow going in and over and we've tailored that a lot better to get a lot more flow out of our high flow inlet cage. And so what sort of speeds are these guys achieving down there at, uh, in Melbourne, Florida at the Simra Speedway at the Sons of Speed? Oh, they're, they're doing the Cannonball Run yes. every year. So I think that yep. was, that's been run uh, sometime yep. this year as well. So what so, sort of speeds are they getting out of your barrels? The highest speed that anyone's told me is 100 and, 117 miles an hour. And that's on the road, not on the racetrack. I'm not sure about the speeds at uh, Billy Lane's Sons of Speed. But, and, um, and when you consider that we're talking about 1920s braking, 117 miles an hour is a very, 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 very fast speed because those brakes are good for around about um, 
60 miles an hour at best, maybe not even. I, th I think back in the day, 35 mile an hour was speeding, I'm not sure. Would have been enough, that's right. Yes. So, caveat emptor, buyer beware, if you're going to do anything more than 35 miles an hour, <laughs> check your brakes or make sure you've got no traffic lights in front of you. Yeah. So, after the first stage of machining or first setup, then the cylinders are transferred to another machine where we machine where we machine out the intake port, the um, inlet cage, the seat for the inlet cage, the hole for the inlet cage, and underneath the inlet cage. So actually, when we um, put the inlet cage in, oh, look at that, like a glove. So you can see there that it's machined away underneath, so we get maximum flow, so the valve isn't shrouded. So you'll see that this is a small uh, intake port on the 61, which has an intake cage, and this fits in here like this, and the gas goes in and then has to make a right-hand turn uh, down into the cylinder and then a right-hand turn to get over the top of the piston. Uh, this has a screwing cage, uh, which is had the nut underneath also uh, filling up all the space in the um, intake port. So with the Ricardo we have quite a large um, intake port and as you can see the difference between the the 61 um, intake port and the uh, Ricardo high flow um, intake also has a, a tough mat uh, valve guide pushed in there and um, when that goes in there you can see that we've um, machined when that goes in there so when that goes in there you can see the actual flow um, the cylinders machine underneath here and on top there so we will give that a little bit of a lick there to improve the flow further and then you can see underneath where the valve sits that it's not shrouded at all uh, by the casting because we've machined uh, underneath that area. Looking down at our exhaust valve now. So looking down at our exhaust valve now, uh, we've actually closed off that uh, exhaust port, uh, which creates uh, more scavenging and better running engine. We've also used the pre-1924 uh, exhaust head diameter. So large intake, smaller exhaust, uh, and better compression leads to a better burn, Bruce, doesn't it? It does. Much better burn. Also, I put a slightly... Uh, that is a thing of beauty, that is. That's lovely. Thank you. Also, I put a slightly um, smaller uh, head intake valve in there to sh stop shrouding uh, around this back part of the of the intake port into the combustion chamber. So a lot of problems with the big valve where it was creating shrouding and stopping the lift. As you can see for the exhaust port there, the valve is machined at a 45. This has got a, a, three, a three angled valve job like a modern cylinder head would have. Yeah, because in, in the, one of the unique things, unlike an overhead valve, the valve here, only about a third of it is exposed to the combustion chamber, and so gas flowing around the other two thirds at the back here has got to get around that wall. So you need a bit Correct. of space, like the old side valve technology, you need that space to flow that gas around, so the smaller valve actually flows more gas because it's got that space. Yeah. So. When, when you're organising your lift, you can't really go past, your lift can't be greater than the distance between the valve and the side of the cylinder, if that makes sense. Yeah, but at least if it does touch it, it's not going to bend the valve and it's certainly not going to touch the piston, which no. is a good thing. No, that's, that's true. It'll, Excellent. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's great technology. Really appreciate your sharing this new technology applied to this ancient technology, 100 year old technology, JD technology. Yep. And it's being brought kicking and screaming into the 21st century 
to make uh, old stuff. Keep going. Yep. And in many cases, if you're doing uh, using these Ricardo racing jugs, which were unobtainium in the day, yes. you could probably only get them if you were a name racer. Uh, you can actually get hold of this high-tech stuff and you can have your machine go just a little bit faster and you can maybe run it on the highway. Reliably. Reliably. Yes. Except if you want to stop, you're going to have to get some brakes for it because 1920s brakes just don't cut it in the 21st century. But this is really good. Reliability, you can keep the old machines running. Yep. 100 years on the old cylinders and they're looking pretty tired. Yeah, so pop them on the shelf. Let's get the bikes back on the road. Put new cylinders on it. Because F heads stand for fast. fast. And these are extra fast. That's a great story. Appreciate that. Thank you, Bruce. You know, everything old can become new again. And Stu Ritchie is one man who's trying to achieve that against all odds. But you're doing it. Yeah, I've got a lot of help. And we salute you for that. Got a lot of help. The machinist won't come on the camera. He's a shy guy. Because he's a shy guy. He's yeah. Lithuanian. Best Lithuanian since Charlie Bronson. <laughs> there you go. Stu, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing your story. Thanks for coming back onto Twist Grip Tales. Don't forget, if you like, uh, if you've got a JD, check out JD Jugs. Follow him on Instagram. Yes. And, um, and you ship to anywhere in the world, don't you? Yes. And in Australia. Even, yes. Even through uh, COVID. Yes. And I've, uh, I've discovered the DHL after many, many problems last year. Things returning to me. Uh, things taking forever. Um, I've discovered that DHL has its own plane, so if you're locked down, DHL's still flying, not relying on commercial passenger flights. And that's a good thing. That's Reliability. Thing. If you're going to buy the stuff, you want to make sure it's going to get there. True. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for the next exciting episode on Twist Grip Tales. Thanks for watching. Bruce, I think you're doing a fabulous job. Thanks Thank for coming you. on board.